You so rarely see a motherfucker on the couch with a blanket up to his chin and a, a blue bag of ice on his head and a glass thermometer hanging out of his mouth because of woke. I've never seen one of those blue bags of ice, bro. Or is it a, I don't know if it's a hot water bottle. I don't know what you're supposed to do when you have a fever. Because when you have a fever, you need to cool yourself down, but you also get chills. So even when it's like 20 Celsius outside, you're like, I'm freaking freezing. You got to get the fever higher to kill the virus faster. You ever realize how washed viruses are? Please, God, don't let me die to a virus in like the next 12 months. I would preferably not like to die to a virus in like the next 50 years if possible, but like the next, the statute of limitations on this being comedic timing is like 12 months. Viruses are like, there's nothing you could fucking do to stop us, bro. We're proliferating throughout our body. We're hijacking your own cells to make copies of ourselves. We are legion. And then the body's like, oh, you like it in here at 97 degrees Fahrenheit? Guess what, bitch? 101 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're like, no! Four degrees. That's all it takes, man. Literally get cooked. It is kind of crazy that the most reliable way to take your temperature is to put a thermometer up your ass. Like, what were they cooking when they made that? Is it, though? It is! If you ever, like, check your kid's temperature via their armpit or something like that, and then you uh, Google, like, hey, what fever temperature is, like, too high for a three-year-old? They're like, rectal temperature 101.8 means you should go to the hospital right now. And I'm like, damn, bro. We still, we got people using glass rectal thermometers in 2024. It might even be the best way, but I, I just don't see myself doing it. I miss the color change strip you just held onto your forehead. I've never seen those. To, with God as my witness, I've never seen them. Those were pog. But do you ever feel like... I know I've been saying this a lot. I'm genuinely not like a return to trad guy at all. I like many of the conveniences of, of modern life. But I do sort of feel like human innovation kind of peaked in like 1940. And then every subsequent attempt to innovate on those innovations has made it worse. Not all of them, like there's obviously some incredible uh, advances in medicine. I definitely feel like when fucking Mozart invented a glass thermometer in 1671, do you think he knew that there were never going to be better thermometers than that? The thermometers that we had when I was a kid, it didn't require batteries. You literally just put that fucker in your mouth wash it first because you don't know where it was uh, and then you wait like 40 seconds and then you look at it and physics tells you your temperature and nowadays I've got like one of them is like uh, it's one of those like forehead thermometers that I don't understand I don't I don't believe that it works and then another one is like a floppy like metal sensor and I'm like maybe maybe it works I don't know now that I think about it though when you go to the hospital and they take your temperature, they do put an, an electronic sensor under your tongue. So maybe they know what they're doing. It's been suggested that they don't by other streamers on this platform, such as myself from time to time. <laughs> well, that's not true. No, 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 that's not true. I've always given the nurses respect. They know what they're doing. It's the doctors who are very dismissive of the patients sometimes. I've always gotten great care from nurses. The doctors is like 50-50. I didn't go through 23 grades for some schmo to tell me they know better. I can understand that. Which it, it feeds into my overall thesis that we need dumber doctors. Because dumber doctors would be more likely to trust their dumb patients, like myself. And that would probably lead to better care. Source, works cited, crackpipe.jpg. I think we're going to start with a difficult game about climbing today. Maybe we'll play something else after that. At 1 p.m., we have a sponsored stream, you're not going to believe it, to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth exclusively on the PlayStation 5 console. My wife is going to jo join me. The thrust of the promotion is much like the unique party system that enables synergies in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. What if you partnered a Final Fantasy expert, my wife, with a Final Fantasy neophyte, myself, except there's one little wrinkle. 
Final Fantasy VII is basically the only Final Fantasy I know uh, everything about. Ask me anything about Final Fantasy VII. I'm like Cloud Strife, bro. I got all the training. I spent my time at the Soldier Academy. Maybe my memory is a little fuzzy. When did it come out? 1997 in North America. Next question. How did you get Yuffie in Final Fantasy VII OG? You were driving Sid's airship over some mountains, and then you get ambushed by her, and you're like, whoa, who's this freaking lady? And then all of a sudden, she's like, bye, and then you check your inventory, and you're like, she took my best materia, bro. What the hell? He's half right. I played Final Fantasy VII, okay? It's been a long time. I played it two or three times. Are you an Eris or a Tifa guy? I'm being straight up with you. I've always been a Tifa guy. Can I be honest with you? I've, even as a, as a young lad, I was always more compelled by like uh, bossy girls. I think because I have no spine myself, I really, I, I have some magnetic sort of compulsion for that like Kirsten Dunst, like he said no onions on the burger. Eris was always kind of like too much like, oh, well, if that's what you want to do. No, 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 I pick last night, you pick tonight. That's not, it, it's just not copacetic for me. You know, when I started living with Kate, I didn't like tomatoes. She said, why don't you eat your tomatoes? I said, I don't like them. She said, they're good for you. I said, sorry, I'm a man going my own way. I don't like them. She said, if you don't eat them, you'll probably have a heart attack and die. I said, you know what? I'm going to start eating these. And now, 10 years later, I love chowing down on a tomato, quite frankly. <laughs> she was right. Have you had a heart attack, though? I don't think so, but there's like no way to know, right? Is it possible that I've had one and then just like um, kind of like white knuckled it? No. I thought there like aren't there rare stories of people that like go into the hospital and they're like, I don't feel good. And then the doctor is like, did you know that you've had six heart attacks? Yes, but not you. All right. OK, OK. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm a little worm. Slash marker, a difficult game about climbing. There you go. I have a bone to pick with people that keep calling games like this streamer bait, okay? Now, I understand the idea that there's streamer bait in the sense that um, streamers like to play them, for sure. And they do very well on stream. However, I think that it's a derisive term that indicates that it's like a bad game that's funny because it's bad. I disagree with this. I don't mean to be like overly uh, like pseudo intellectual about this, but I look at games like this, getting over it, Alt F4, et cetera, et cetera. These for me are modern addictinggames.com flash games that you would play in computer class in the ninth grade when your teacher got hired to teach computers in like 1970, and now in 2002, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, so he's like, just sit at the computer for 72 minutes. And I, I, I don't know, I always, gamers are so funny, man, not individually, as we've proven on this website over the last 10 years, but like en masse, what makes this less of a quote-unquote real game than Baldur's Gate 3 or something like that? I, I'm not just being like needlessly obfuscating but i'm like why why is this less of a game than baldur's gate effort yeah but there's like a lot of horrible games out there that were required herculean effort to make they were just cooked from the conceptual phase <laughs> bro was like i'm not going to use game maker i'm going to make my own engine you know and then it takes 10 years to come out and the industry has shifted since then like it happens all the time actually comparing this piece of s to baldur's gate 3 uh, that's what's called an ad hominem attack, which actually reveals the weakness of your argument. That's not an ad hominem. It's, uh, it, well, it's an ad gamenum. It's an ad gamenum. I guess homonym, or does homonym mean word or something? I don't know Latin, because I was not born in 1988 BC. Watching a librarian video, he's at the same spot. Um, you don't understand. This is my commute. You wake up, you eat breakfast, you get in your car, you drive to work, you come home, you park your car in the same garage from whence you left that day. 
And then you get the privilege of doing it again tomorrow morning as well. And maybe every morning for the next 40 years or something like that. It is rarer to, uh, in a day or two days, to find yourself in a different place from where you were at yesterday. That is the outlier. That was close. That was close. How'd the customer service call go? Thank you for reminding me. Um, <clears throat> you know what I realized is that I don't use the customer service line too much these days. I didn't realize that in the last like five, 10 years, companies did everything they could to not have to talk to their customers. Like you Google like airline helpline, and then instead of getting a phone number that allows you to talk to a real person, they, they put you in like a walled garden where there's only a, a database of like FAQs and stuff like that. And if you don't find like your solution in the FAQs, they're like, here, call this number. And then when you call the number, they only give you like X number of possible options. And sometimes the options don't apply. And you're like, Is, can I just hit zero and talk to a human being? And the answer is no. No, you cannot. But so long story short, we booked our flights through Expedia. So first I called the airline and eventually uh, a robot was like, because you booked through a third party, you got to talk to the third party. So I called the third party, um, put in all of my data, the invoice number, the four digits of the credit card that were used to book it, uh, you know, the email address associated, associated with the account. Got to talk to somebody, and then uh, she was like, you know, this was 10, 15 minutes into the call. She was like, oh, because you actually booked through, like, your bank or something like that, we have to transfer you to, like, a different department. And then I was like, sure, no problem, until I had to go through the phone menu again and re-enter all of the data again. But then finally... Uh, I got to talk to another real human being where I repeated myself. That was just not that I was going sideways instead of up. Uh, and she said, I'm sorry that happened to you. And I said, that's it's not your fault. It's OK. And she said, OK, I'm looking into this for you. Just a minute. Uh, and then she put me on hold. And uh, three minutes later, they hung up on me. And then I assumed that it was by accident and they would call me back. And uh, they still have not to this day. So, well, to this morning, I suppose. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. The, all we're trying to get uh, a refund for is no disrespect to WestJet, but my wife paid for us to pick our seats because it's kind of important for us to sit with our three-year-old child on the airplane. And then WestJet on all four of our flights was like, surprise, even though you paid for uh, your seats, we've just shuffled you all around the plane. So we manually had to like talk to people and be like, hey, do you wanna, hey, do you wanna sit next to a strange toddler? Or like possibly we could trade seats and you could like sit by yourself and not be harangued for the entirety of the flight? And they were like, yeah, sure, that, sound, that sounds great actually. So we're, we're really only trying to get like the 50 bucks back for like each of the flights. Why would they do this? Listen, I'm not suggesting... Motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not suggesting the airline business is easy. But they kept telling us like we had to change your seats because we have a tail swap. And I'm like, you are not speaking English to me. I don't work in the aviation industry. What the fuck is a tail swap? Just tell me you, you had to change planes. But then also, I'm like... I, like, as much as it sounds like maybe entitled, I really don't care about WestJet's problems. Like, seat me next to my daughter, especially because we paid for it. And <laughs> if we didn't pay for it and I, like, went to argue at the counter and was like, please sit me next to my daughter, like, I would understand that that's a little entitled, even though that's the way, like, it should probably be in, like, a perfect world. But, like, we fucking paid for it. And they're like, sorry, we changed airplanes. Brother, your whole airline only flies 737s. Why does a tail swap matter? It doesn't make any sense. It's not like you, you took us off a 737 and put us on like a, a DC-20 or something like that. Like you, you literally only have the same 
airplane in your entire fleet. Because the 737-800 is very different than a 737-200. That's true, the 737-200s, the wheels stay on during landing. <laughs> But also, again, like, I'm sorry to say, but, like, it's not my problem that you, your airplane didn't get... I guess it is my problem, unfortunately, but it shouldn't be my problem that you couldn't get the airplane to the gate or something. If it's Boeing, I'm not going. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to be staying at home then. And if that's, like, what you're going to do, that's fine. But I've been seeing all these tweets that are like, you won't catch me on a Boeing flight. And I'm like, brother, then you're not going anywhere. I'm you, The thing that strikes me is your ass probably wasn't going anywhere to begin with. So like, why are you putting on airs that like you're, you're a world traveler and now you're like exclusively selecting Airbus? I feel like I've flown on an Airbus like three times in my entire life and it was all flights to Europe. And those planes were fucking sick, man. <laughs> those planes were, I remember I, I flew economy Lufthansa to Frankfurt, the bathroom in the economy section was down a staircase that then had like four lavatories and there was like a self-serve pretzel snack bar, like a bowl with the wrapped pretzels in it. And I was like, this is the nicest airplane I've ever been on in my entire life. Bro, what? I know, I was like, this is what it, this is what it could be like. Okay. You go like this, you release earlier. The better, 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 better. She is not pleased. Why is she upset? First off, it's none of your business. Secondly, she doesn't want to go to daycare because grandma and grandpa are here. You're going to be like, why not let her just stay home with grandma and grandpa? First off, we're paying for the daycare. Secondly... My wife's going to a girls' night out tonight, so I need grandma and grandpa to be well-rested and fresh. Because <laughs> they're going to be doing some domestic labor for me later, depending on my level of consciousness, after I have some recall of throat lozenges. I thought you guys had no friends. Yeah, we're actually, like, integrated into the community a little bit now, believe it or not. He is ulting. <laughs> Sounds like chat watching Balatro. So true. You know what? I've deluded myself into thinking that we have 50-50 division of child labor <laughs> for raising. <laughs> because like I pick her up from daycare and Kate drops her off. But the drop off is way worse. The pickup, she's like, daddy, I love you. She comes like hopping out to me. It gives me a hug. Of course, of course. Well, well, well. This morning, don't come play with me, Daddy. Don't come play with me. I don't like you. I said, you don't like me? Why would you say something like that? It hurts Daddy's feelings. She said, okay, mm, I like you one day a week. I said, that's pretty bad, honestly. And then she said, 
Or I said, why do you say you don't like daddy? And she said, you make me do not nice things. I said, like what? She said, like, go to daycare. And I don't like to go to this class. And I was like, you don't have to worry about that. That class is over now. You don't have to go to that class. Then all of a sudden, when it's time to go to daycare, where, where, daddy, daddy, come give me a hug. You play the long game, you always win. No, I didn't hit her with the well, well, well. It's the problem with being a parent. You don't get to be the one. Well, I guess you, parents are probably the number one demographic that says I told you so. But like, not with the toddler. You got to just be like, oh my gosh, honey, what's wrong? <clears throat> you don't want to go to like a cool building and do arts and crafts with your friends all day? I understand that. That makes perfect sense. She'll see these clips in 15 years and feel owned. No, she'll probably be like, well, I didn't ask to be born. And like, it's kind of hard to counter that one. Because it's definitely true. It's like, that, that's kind of like, you can't really compete with that one. She's like, I didn't really have any agency whether or not I came into the world. So it's kind of your responsibility to make sure that I'm okay. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So I do have to say, my parents have been talking to me about movies, okay? They said, have you seen Poor Things? I said, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. It's on my list. It's on Disney Plus Canada now, too. I just found out last night seeing an ad on the television. They both loved it. They said eight and a half to nine out of ten. I said, I've also been trying to see Oppenheimer. I got a scathing criticism on Oppenheimer from my dad. He said three and a half out of ten. I'm not trying to light him up. I haven't seen the movie myself. I trust him. But I was like, man, it just <laughs> just won like 11 Oscars. Dude, dude's coming at the king. This way you got to respect it. Why? He said it was too long. Based. <laughs> Zoomer. <laughs> well, you know how it is. Like when you see a movie, you decide how much you like it out of 10, and then you basically build reasons around that afterwards. You don't go like, oh, on the one hand, I like this, this, and this. Or I didn't like this, this, and this. I look at that, and that looks like a four to me. You go, ah, oh, that was about a three and a half out of 10, and then you go, here's my reasons why. It's just vibes. Yeah, exactly. How do you feel about 12 Angry Men? Oh, what, you mean uh, a podcast? <laughs> That would kill in Lemmy's chat. Dude, someone in here, I was talking about Lemmy, and they said Lemmy is like a, an entitled, they didn't use this word. Let's, let's PG-13 it. They said he's a pompous, entitled brat. I don't know if that's true, but can I say something? He's entitled to be pompous. He's funnier than you. That's a plus. He, like, I don't know what you want me to say. He, he might not even be pompous to begin with. But if he is, if he's entitled, I'm sure if you're like one of the top 100 funniest people on the planet and you got to read Twitch chat all day, you're probably like, this is killing my brain. I probably wouldn't be in a great mood either. Luckily, I'm not that funny. So when I see stuff in the chat, I'm like, whoa, that's pretty funny. <laughs> but I like, you know, I don't, maybe it's not fair. I like when artists act better than the people that consume their art. I don't care if fucking Yorgos Lanthimos is down to earth. I don't care if he still makes Coca-Cola in the same way for, you know, 97 years. I mean, the bro has like a, a brain that's one of a kind. He should be weird. He should act above it all to some extent. You're really gonna go up and you're gonna be... Yorgos Lanthimos walked away from an interview after he was asked whether he'd rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck. Yeah, fucking get out of here, bro. Don't, don't waste your time with that, okay? Now me, I gotta think about it. Probably a hundred duck-sized horses. Horse-sized duck is basically an ostrich. Horse-sized duck is basically a dinosaur. I mean, I don't want to get bitten by a horse-sized duck. I feel like a, a, a horse-sized horse Obviously, it, it's going to have a lot of kicking power, but um, 
it's not going to bite me, probably. Its mouth is not designed for that. But a, a beak is a much more efficient biting tool, I think. Hey, by the way, librarian, I got a bit for you, okay? Did you see the TikTok that is like dramatic music and it's a clip from Ted where Mark Wahlberg is sitting alone on the couch and then Ted says, holy crap! And then Mark Wahlberg like rushes in like something incredibly bad just happened and he goes, what, whoa, what's wrong? And then Ted goes, I got on the internet for the first time. There's so many or there's so much and I think that it's supposed to be, he says, pornography on here. But instead, it's um, breeding announcements for Bully XL pit bulls. Mewtwo X Elsa. Frankenjar's Thriller. Did you see that one? The banning of TikTok is going to set comedy back so far. We're actually, we pulled forward so much growth in comedy as a result of this app. You don't understand. We've gone from like rap parodies of music to that abstract stuff in like 12 years or something like that. We can't go back, man. We can't go back to season nine of The Office. We will not be going to Instagram Reels. What the fuck? Holy shit, dude, what's the matter? Major League Bullies, Crayon. Running a stud special on this pimpy son. Two times, two pimpy. times, pimpy. Two times, pimpy. Two times, pimpy. Apex Baby G. <laughs> baby G. Principe Vegeta. <laughs> Mewtwo X Elsa. Popeye X Celine. Spinach. 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 John had Frenchie's thriller. <laughs> TikTok minus Americans might go hard. But that lady who built the mine in her house. She's American, right? Won't somebody think of her? She wouldn't have gotten caught without TikTok. Some truth to that, but you know what? I think you're right. It's better to have known about the tunnel and lost it than to have never tunneled at all. And being a streamer is so easy. You just wait for someone to say f something funny in chat and then you repeat it and everybody laughs and they're like, that's so funny. But what's fucked up is that even the person who wrote it the first time is like, yes, they read my comment and people liked it. It's like such a fucked up, like, parasitic relationship. If, like, the way I'm feeling today, if I worked in essentially any other job on planet Earth, I think I'd be fucked. I wouldn't be able to do it. But I'm, like, I'm just barely not at the top of my game today. Pay chatters, pay... Oh, no, the chatters are going to unionize. This is not going to be funny when this movement gains actual momentum in, like, 2028. But honestly, like, if they ever make paid chatting a job... I might just stop the whole streaming thing and then move on to chatting. I think I could be an even better chatter than streamer. You wouldn't survive a day. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to write what you think is a 10 out of 10 joke and then the streamer doesn't read it and then you write it again and then the streamer is like, yeah, I saw it the first time. Ooh. You eating any pie today? Why am I like threatened by this question? I'm not eating any pie today. I, I would say I eat a piece of pie less than once per annum. Tragic. I, I kind of like pie. It's just, I don't know. I don't come across it all that often here. Meat pies maybe at a British pub. But like lately I've been on my, my fish and chips game. Oh, we're pogging. We're not pogging! Go. No, no. Oh, oh, it's good. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's okay. Holy cow.
Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, we, we go again. We go again. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't fall victim to this. Guys, I'm in trouble. Hold, hold. No, 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 hold. Oh, we're in. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. We're just going back. We're just. Oh, we almost didn't go back. Oh, man. Can you not just go to the ceiling? No, the Grecian marble is too. It's too smooth. I asked my grandfather, who works in masonry, why don't we just make more Grecian marble? He said, we can't. We don't know how to anymore. This 97 year old. Greek mason still makes Ionic columns the old-fashioned way. I'm just asking an honest question. Why did we all learn about the three different types of columns? We all didn't? I mean, I did at my high school in rural Ontario. In history class, they were like, guess what? This is a Dorian pillar. This is an Ionian pillar. I don't even know. Corinthian, that's right. The last one's Corinthian. What kind of dirt does the, the column industry have on the education industry, man? Because it's historical? They're just columns. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, when we learn about Alexander the Great, I'm like, that's, you know, pretty important. That informs the way that, like, the globe looks today. But, like, columns? Wow, it just doesn't seem that important to me, to be honest. If you had some columns at your place, you'd feel differently? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I don't have the interior design sensibilities of Tony Montana, okay? At least you have his cocaine habits. It's so funny that there are people out there who think I do cocaine. I don't even know. Did you see that video of Conor McGregor? There were like 14-year-old kids from the Philippines that were like, this guy's obviously on coke. And I was like, how do you know that? I'm so out of the cocaine ecosystem, I don't even know what someone looks like when they're on cocaine. Hi, Connor. Hello, how are you? I'm Claire Gallagher with the Daily Texan. Um, what can you tell us about your acting debut? Obviously, it's your first experience. Hard work, hard work, but you know, we got it on. It's in the bank for life. You know, you put something in the bank, something, maybe it's not going to be there for life. You might spend it. This baby is in there for life, and I'm ecstatic about that. You know, I got into a good, strong shape. I gave it my all. You know, I, I was a little probably green at times, a bit rough, rough around the edges, but for the character, it worked. Yeah. And, you know, onwards to the next one if, 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 I, if there is a next one. Yeah. I thought he was just, like, really excited. Philippines mention. <laughs> what do you think someone on cocaine looks like? I mean, I guess I would expect them to be sniffing a lot and maybe licking their lips. But it's tough because that's also something you do when you're sick. Yo, great news! My mucus is no longer clear! We're starting to get to the green stuff. Let's fucking go! Is that good? In my course of illness, that's usually good. First couple of days, I start with clear mucus, and then it turns green, and then that's how I know that I'm like almost, I'm, I'm starting to crest over it. Why does blood know that? Because I fucking look at the shit that comes out of my body. Do you look at the toilet paper after you wipe? Yes, I look after the, at the toilet paper after I wipe. Do you fold your TP and wipe again? Let me think. No. I take two to three squares, fold, wipe, close, and put into the toilet. Why close? I don't know. It's just the way I've always done it. Never really thought about it that serious. I'm a five-sheeter? I mean, that's crazy. There's people out there that are going, like, three sheets, you wasteful ass. Okay, you're probably using, like, you're wiping three times as many times if you're using one sheet. Like, it's, it all comes out in the fucking wash, bro. Are you a folder or a crumpler? I do a little, like, a hybrid theory, I think. A little, a little between a fold and a crumple. Why fold? It's already square. I don't want to risk my finger 
breaching through the substrate and getting a little dookie on my finger. So even though this shit is already two-ply, I kind of fold it to make it like four-ply. Really, the more layers of protection I can get between my finger and my feces, like, it's the, the, the better. How has your wiping technique changed since the advent of smartphones? Uh, you have uh, ADHD. If your wiping has changed because you're always holding your phone in your hand, you've got to examine your relationship with your smartphone. You just put it down for like 20 seconds and then wipe the, the best way you know how and then pick it back up. There is an epidemic of people in the men's bathroom looking at their phones while they piss. I'm not going to say I've never done it, but I, I kind of, I've reached a, a zen point in my life where I'm like, do I really need to be looking at my phone while I'm pissing in a public bathroom? Like, do I really, like, how weak am I that I need that 20 seconds to be saturated with some kind of distraction? But now I see, like, middle-aged dudes pull up to the urinal, one hand on the phone, just scrolling, the other hand, pss. Come on, man. I mean, in your own home, you could do whatever you want, but... What else do you need to be looking at? I don't know, it's just kind of... I think you should make sure, you should have a constant through line to see where your piss is going. Because, like, if you are not hitting the bowl for even, like, half a second, that's a fucked up situation. You've compromised things. Like, if, if ever the stream breaks connection with the bowl, your shoes or your pants or the floor is going to be, like, totally soaked. You know what's troubling sometimes? When you, um... You, you pee, and I'm, just, I'm uh, just a normal person like any of you. Sometimes you might end up with a little dribble on the toilet seat or the, around the bowl, right? As a man of, I, I think we live in a society, I take a little toilet paper and I wipe the, the piss off of the bowl. But then, like, sometimes you throw it into the toilet afterwards and it fucking fizzes like you dropped it into sulfuric acid. Am I dying? Like, sometimes you throw it in and it's just like, bloop. And sometimes you throw it in and it's like an Alka-Seltzer tablet. It's like, <laughs> That shit has never happened to me. Maybe I should talk to a doctor. That is not normal. How am I supposed to explain this to a doctor, though? You don't think it could be that, like, the toilet paper is acidic and the piss is normal? <laughs> Probably chemicals collected from wiping the bowl. Maybe it's copium, but that makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably the toilet bowl cleaner that we use. Okay, okay. No! No! Okay, hold. Hold again. It's so much harder than you'd expect. Yes! Climb up the center. Go again. Go again. Yes! What, what the hell is that? We're on, boys. We're on. Okay, okay. <laughs> Whoa! Daddy, chill. Hold! That was a tactical fall. Get ready to learn it. Dan, I I didn't know what this game was cooking with until this moment. I didn't know it had real physics. I thought it just had climbing. Wouldn't it be crazy if I did learn it? Like I showed up one day and I just spoke fluent Mandarin and I did a whole stream in Mandarin. Quirked up white boy does whole stream in Mandarin. Everyone tells him to die. 
What the hell? Prezo, by the way, I saw your post about the Ludwig subreddit. They do fucking hate your ass, man. What's up with that? Just because you made a, a funny joke on Twitter? People were like, I didn't appreciate this joke? Like, lighten up a bit, man. <laughs> People on Reddit will always be like, I'm not trying to be toxic, but does anybody else think that, like, this guy should die? I really, really, really like this content creator. Like, I think if we met in real life, we would be best friends. But this person who's actually friends with him is my least favorite person in history, and I wish they would disappear off the face of the planet. Like, it's, it's insane, man. Why do they hate Prezo so much? Well, Prezo tweeted that Ludwig came out as non-binary. And then, I guess they got excited, or offended, and then when they looked it up and it, it wasn't a valid thing that actually happened, they felt betrayed. What was the original joke? The joke was that Ludwig came out as non-binary, but actually, he didn't. <laughs> I can tell the other guys on this podcast hate this guy on the podcast. That, yeah, I, that comment happens in every show, man. It's crazy. Anyone else get the vibe that everybody else on the show would just wish this motherfucker they've known for 20 years would stop talking? But then, I went to Justin's stream, and while he was sleeping, he was playing, like, old Rainbow Six videos. And I was, like, listening to my old voice from 2017. And I was like, these motherfuckers hate me and want me to shut up. I was, like, I was singing too much. I was interrupting people. I, my voice was different, and I was saying stuff like, Hey, can I get a, can I get a reinforce on this ping? Like, I was talking about the game, I, and I was like, why did these guys ever hang out with me, man? <laughs> you still interrupt and sing? Yeah, but, like, at least I'm funnier now. Back then, I, mm, does anybody have a, a, an umpy? Does anyone have a four grippy for an umpy? Hey, oh, watch out, guys, there's a castle on ping. Like, what, what, what the fuck? Who did I think I am, man? Shroud? I'm gonna, next we're gonna go to Nibelheim, and I'm gonna try to level up my Knights of the Round Materia to level 4, which makes the summon scene take 27 minutes, and no, you can't press the button to actually skip through it, but why would I want to? Next I'm gonna go to, uh, we got a lot of stuff to do in this video, guys, I gotta go to Golden Saucer and win the, win the Chocobo races so I can get a Golden Chocobo, and after we get a Golden Chocobo, we can go get Knights of the Round and Mime from the Materia Caves. I was literally, I spent like 10 years of my life talking like that. Like, what the fuck was, I don't know what happened to me, but I'm glad it happened, man. This is like Jim Carrey after he put on the mask. He was like, bro, fuck Stanley Ipkiss. I watched some of your Kerbal Space Program videos and people told me, or you have gone through some stuff voice-wise. Go read the comments for those Kerbal Space Program videos. There were literally people telling me to blank myself. You won't see them now because it's been 10 years, so the top comment is like, Guys, guys, we should really be nicer to NL in these videos or he's going to stop making the Kerbal Space Program com uh, co content. Sorry, my, my Wernicke's area is not working today. You know what's crazy? A couple of weeks ago, we ordered Papa John's. On the pizza box, it says, We proudly serve Pepsi products. Why would you print an embarrassing statement like that on your pizza box. What do you mean you proudly serve Pepsi products, man? Begrudgingly serve Pepsi products as a result of an exclusive brand partnership? Sure. But we proudly serve it? I mean, that just seems like the most transparent lie of all time. Why Papa John, though? Listen, the Canadian Pizza Wars, it's in kind of like a, it's in a bad place. We don't have the same kind of like capitalist paradise that you guys have in the United States where if you live in New Jersey there's like a hundred amazing pizzerias within a 30 minute drive of you do you rock with Domino's uh, I do not rock with Domino's I told my Domino's story recently as a kid uh, was a skid no one knew me by name crashed my own house party because nobody came as a kid uh, Domino's was ass then, in like 2007, they were like, we made it better. And I was like, yeah, nice try. And then I ate it, and I was like, whoa, they did make it better. And then, that had been kind of what I've been operating under the assumption of for like 15 years, right? Uh, so, 
maybe eight months ago, we ordered Domino's and I ate it and I was like, they made it bad again. No good Italian food in the Pacific Northwest either. Little bro's never been to ask for Luigi. <laughs> Come on. No good Italian food in the, in the Pacific Northwest. Are you from Naples? Brother, it's just no disrespect. It's noodles and sauce. You can, that's the beauty of it. You can make it good anywhere. Chicken parm, not pasta. Oh yeah, you mean uh, adult tendies? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> people love to say there's no good restaurants in X, even when they don't live there. It's true, people, and I, you know, I'm guilty of doing it myself. Like I've, I've spent some time in Seattle, but how many meals have I eaten there? Probably like 30 meals. I'm like, Seattle food scene is horrible. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It is, it's based on my experience, but I'm sure it's probably got some great food. I just don't know where to find it. We got our first Michelin stars this past year. Vancouver as well. But I've stopped going out to cool restaurants and started going out to like the white spot instead because they have a, an absolutely crazy kids menu. <laughs> The kids menu goes crazy. I don't know, what's the kids menu like at, uh, I'm trying to even think of the name of these restaurants. Burdock and Company? What's the, what's the kids menu like at Burdock and Company? Oh, we have a fucking rhubarb foam that kids seem to like. Oh, really? Does it compete with grilled cheese sandwich, crinkle cut french fries and ketchup? I don't think so. Is the concept of a kids tasting menu funny? Yes. Kids do not care. In my, well, at least my three-year-old does not care. She doesn't care about the art of restaurant touring. That's for sure. Like, we'll go to like a ramen restaurant. I'll be like, what do you want to eat? And she'll be like, French fries. And I'm like, that's tough. <laughs> that's something. I don't know if we can do that. Hey, well, you know, they don't have French fries, but here they have miso ramen. How does that sound? Oh, you don't want that? Uh, okay, how about shio ramen? Or maybe even shoyu ramen? No, none of that sounds like it's going to hit the spot, huh? How about, they got one appetizer, they got gyoza. Did you see that Walmart might start charging to use self-checkout? If that's true, and I'm doubting that it's 100% valid because of the fact that it confirms, like, it, it makes me so mad immediately that my gut reaction is to be skeptical, which I think is healthy. If that is real, they're cooked. It's the exact backwards way that it should be, bro. You should get a discount for using the self-checkout. Don't even get me started, by the way. When I'm at the grocery store, I know I haven't seen the video essays. I understand it's a corporate tax write-off, okay? If I got a $90 grocery order and the cashier says, would you like to add $2 for like, you know, underprivileged pets? I'm like, sure, add two bucks to the bill. When the robot does it, I'm like one bad day away from smashing that machine to bits. If you don't have the audacity to hire a human being to ask for the donation, and you actually just have like a little UI element pop up that's like, would you like to give us two extra dollars? You can seriously suck me. It's like that at McDonald's too. Yes, but I will say at McDonald's, I, um... I typically round up to the nearest dollar for Ronald McDonald House. If my order was like 1803 and it was a 97 cent roundup, I might think twice. But if it's like 1872, I'm like, here you go. Here's 28 cents. Why not just save up and give $100 and get the tax receipt? Lazy. What would you do if money was no object? Money is no object and I walk through Leicester Square on a Tuesday. Also, can I, I got uh, canvassed when I went into the grocery store about a month ago. It was a breast cancer charity. And I, I just reserve judgment for a second, okay? They said, would you like to donate some money for breast cancer research? I said, sure. They said, oh, thank you so much. How much do you want to donate? I said, $20. They said, oh, thank you. The minimum donation is actually $40. I don't know if the dude was running a hustle but I was like, you can do that? You could be like, thanks for your generosity, but actually $20 is below the minimum donation. But I, I'll admit, he, 
I mean, he mogged me, basically. I had already agreed. There was like a foot in the door, right? I was like, oh, sure, no problem. Double? Yeah, double it and give it to the next guy. Like, I get that you got, uh, you know, like processing fees and overhead and stuff like that, but holy cow. You got scammed? That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is that I was pressured into becoming a hero. Which I gladly took because I had already gotten the inertia of saying I was going to do it. So there was a higher cognitive cost to backing out at that point. Bro, this is awful. You've been on the same pillar for ages. Progress Andes, when uh, they look at the calendar and realize that the Earth is in the same place it was 365 days ago. Is that my daughter in there? Oh, grip strength. I need assistance! You see that TikTok? I love that TikTok. Oh, man. Jack. Jack! Can you hear me? Jack. Come on. Come on, Jack. Jack! I need assistance! I've been seeing so many TikToks because of Twitter. It's actually so funny that this is the best that Twitter has been in years. And literally all it is is like, here's the best post from another platform. Like, that's such a fall from grace. <laughs> like, actually, Twitter's been trending in the right direction now that it's just become reposted TikToks. Yes! Hold. Hold. Okay, I understand. I understand what you want from me. Holy cow. I mean, it's not really calm. But it's calmer. It's certainly calmer. Go. Chibli's launch technique is actually like so evergreen. You can use it wherever you wish. Uh, okay, careful. Come on. Huge. No glancing, none glancing. I'm in the pool, bro. I'm in the pool. Okay. I was in the pool! Me trying to explain why my penis is small, but actually it's just small. Thank you, Seinfeld! Thank you! You've given me plausible deniability! You see that TikTok? That's like, I'm a savage. Penis size average. I love the swings, push me higher. We, I'm a savage. Penis size average. But she says she still gotta have it. Tickle my stomach, I'm laughing. What's happening? I'm a savage. Shrinkage is real? Oh, you piece. Shrinkage definitely is real. I was your masseuse. Does it make me a fucking point dexter that I always keep my underwear on during the massage? From what I understand, you can either... Uh, go full nude, or you can keep your underwear on. So I said, why would I ever go full nude during a massage? I don't think it's weird to go nude during the massage. That's like, those are the two ways that they say you can do it. Any massage therapists in chat? I have genuine questions. What percentage of your new patients... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inappropriately proposition you even though you're a serious uh, craftsman or craftswoman. I'm going to assume it's low. I'm going to assume it's like 2%. 
But I, I, I guarantee it must happen, right? My colleague says it's happened to him five times over 10 years. That's not insignificant. I'm sure, yeah, you get banned for life, like, as soon as you say it, right? You're like, bro, I got a lab coat on. Like, what are you... <laughs> My friend is a dentist and it's happened to him? People are crazy, man. That's why I always jerk off before I go to the dentist. Plus two, plus two, let's go. <laughs> Oh, it just gets you in the mood, right? When they get that metal hook out and they start digging around in your gums. And they're like, you're bleeding a lot. Are you flossing? And you're like, do I tell them a lie when this is their job? They obviously know that I'm not flossing. Or do I tell them the truth and they're going to be like disappointed in me? And then I'm like, no, no, I actually floss a lot. I just have anemia. Yeah, yeah but I, like localized entirely in my mouth. I got to see what percentage of Dennis actually floss. I'm sure it's higher than like a non-dentist. But I bet there's dentists who are like, sorry, I'm fucking shivering. <laughs> I'm sure there's dentists who are like, you got to floss and then they go home and they're like, just brushing it and going straight to bed. Even normal doctors tend to floss. Well, yeah, because like they got so much free time. They're only working like 18 hour days. Okay, full stop. Most annoying part of going to the dentist, when the back of your mouth starts filling up with rinse solution and your own spit, but they tell you you're not supposed to swallow, and you're holding your mouth open, waiting for when they actually put like the suction in there, and then sometimes they take too long, and you're like about to swallow, and then they go, no, 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 don't swallow, here you go. And then they put it in, but they like stick it to your soft palate, so it doesn't actually get any like throughput, like there's no bandwidth, and it only sucks out like two molecules of water. And you're like, oh, now I gotta wait like another three minutes for them to do it again. It's fucked up, because like I feel so cold that I'm like, I feel like I should be able to see my breath. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to get a damn blanket. It's going it's to be the coziest stream you've ever seen. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Freaking chilly, bro. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm chilling. It's just the chills and the nose. I hope. What's the lower reason this guy climbs? Got nothing better to do, man. You know, what's the reason that anybody does anything at the end of the day? You're either getting paid for it or you, you derive some enjoyment out of it. What is life but just one big climb? Yo, I told you you would uh, agree with me about more things the, after you had a kid, DL Guiga. Congrats to my man Phil on becoming a dad today. Yo, congrats, Phil, but honestly, like, congrats to your partner uh, more so because honestly, I've been there. You didn't really do that much probably. I know you're like, it's not easy. Of course it's not easy, you know. You still got to do like a, a lot of stuff relative to what you would do on like a normal Thursday. But like there's nothing compared to what the, the mother of the child went through. Little Guiga's turning two months old. That is crazy to think about. I'm trying to think two months old. The milestones at that age are like, they're so hard to remember. It's like the, their eyes get a certain bit of sunshine when they hear their name. They track you moving. Next stop, Call of Duty Esports. I remember like, and I've, I've told this before. I remember being like, man, you know, those first like, basically the first year when they're either like non-syllabic, monosyllabic, or like just speaking nonsense. I was like, it's going to be crazy when she has the cognitive ability to like express her emotions in uh, English in a way that we understand. 
And it was for like six months, but honestly, now I'm kind of like, take me back. Because <laughs> you'd think that maybe it would lead to less crying. And I guess it probably, there is less crying because they can express themselves in other ways. But they, they go for the gut, man. They go for your heart. I don't like daddy. I only like daddy one day a week. Like, that's crazy. These toddlers are like testing their, their limits, man. They'll, she'll legit say to me something like, I don't love daddy. And you just got to like not take it seriously because two minutes later, she's like, daddy, I love you so much. I get that shit too. It hurts. It does hurt because I'm like, why am I fucking putting myself through all this shit? <laughs> oh, you don't love me? Okay, well then make your own peanut butter toast in the morning. Put your own orange and mango juice in a cup with a screw-on lid with a straw attached to it so that when you inevitably knock it over 20 times, it doesn't ruin our table. Don't worry, it just gets worse. Yeah. It's what you sign up for, though. I mean, it's... Uh, there's times when it's frustrating. There's times when it's... Uh, exciting but it's always fulfilling you seem pretty patient i mean having a having a toddler will do that honestly because like there's nothing you could do about it i think it's a good lesson for life is like the more impatient you are the longer something's going to take most of the time i'm a very impatient guy should i have a baby at 22 only you can answer that i would have described myself as an impatient person as well before I had a kid. Mind you, I was like, I don't know, 32 or something like that. But you can, you, you can only learn from like on-the-job training, bro. My grandma had a baby at 18. You'll be fine. Yeah, but like there wasn't anything else to do back then. Did you plan for a kid or did it just happen? It's kind of a presumptuous question, right? It's like, was this the sort of thing you had on your itinerary? Or did you just like start shooting live rounds and hoping for the best? <laughs> I see you. I see you. I've been asked this so many times. It's kind of a crazy question. Hey, Anel, you wrap that shit up or no? I'm not afraid to touch on the mature subjects. I wrap that shit up. It's, it's easy. It's the least you could do. Please stop. You have a problem. It's the human body, bro. Vasectomy pill. I'm kind of, I'm holding off. I don't mean to be gross. I understand the benefit of a vasectomy. I just don't know if it's worth, and I'm not getting into the benefit for obvious reasons. I don't know if it's worth going through the process at this present moment. Like, I don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze right now. I know it's not a major surgery, but it's like... You know, before I have it done, I want to make sure that I'm like, I'm done, you know? Because I don't want a snip, snap, snip, snap type situation. I don't want to rush into it just like, bat chest, bat chest! It feels 12% better, bat chest! And then like, oh, fuck. There's a little ball vibrator you can get that kills most of your sperm. Maybe I'm getting too familiar here, but there's also like a little, you can just put like a coat on your dude. I don't want to fucking magic blender my shit. I don't know what's going on down there. That seems potentially dangerous. <laughs> what's the candy corn thing you're wearing? It's a blanket because I'm inexplicably freezing, even though it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit in here. I normally run at 72. So 76 and feeling cold is crazy. Bro, you're sick. I know. Have you seen the progress I've made today? Did you eat recently? Yes. I consumed two Slurpees and eight Popsicles. Do you think that could be part of the problem? You look amazing. You know what's fucked up? People will always complain about someone saying, like, you look sick. It's way more fucked up when you are sick and people say, like, you're looking good today. You're like, really? My skin is, like, uh, gray 
and I'm dehydrated as shit and I feel like garbage. And they're like, wow, you look good, man. <laughs> Me holding on to the chair when someone opens the emergency exit on the airplane, I can't. I'm joking. I mean, I, psh, you're not wrong. What else are you going to do? You know what was crazy about being in the U.S. Virgin Islands? Or I guess it was the British Virgin Islands. They were telling us we were going on this tour, and they're like, get ready. You're going to go on an open-air safari to your, to your beach destination. And I said, open-air safari, that sounds fun. Lo and behold, an open-air safari is actually just a truck with no walls and no doors and no seatbelts. So I'm sitting there, like, at the end of the truck with no door next to me, like, with my kid on my lap holding on to the, my kid as tight as I can, and then with my other hand, like, holding on to the seat in front of me. And then the thing's going, like, and you're climbing, like, 500 feet into the air on this one lane road and then doing like a 90 degree turn it was scary man it was like a tractor ride that's what happened to me in aruba they're doing things a little differently down there then when we were in the u.s virgin islands they were like this tour may contain an open air safari truck or a charter bus and i was like please god charter bus and i'm happy to report it was a charter bus I live in the U.S. Virgin Islands? That's crazy. Do you live on the island of St. Thomas? That's where I was. What's interesting is that most places you go, I feel like you can easily tell who is a tourist and who's a local. In the U.S. Virgin Islands, I was like, I have no idea at all. Like, dude in the pirate costume, like, did he... Has he been living here for 20 years, or did he just get off the, the cruise ship? I have no idea. I think he was local. What the fuck? He's got a damn G-chat message. This is what it's like in the 35-year-old group chat. The run-up to this election is going to be infuriating and depressing. The Ionic 5 is the front-runner for my next car, though. <laughs> Oh, man. 1967. So there were like three um, songs that existed at this point in music history. Green sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> They call it Mellow Yellow. No. Oh, I can't see me. That's, um, imagine, the turtles, imagine me and you. Happy together. Ooh! As made famous by, uh, Charlie and Donald Kaufman in the Nicolas Cage film adaptation. Ooh. Okay. It is the song from the Smash Brothers 64 commercial. Pi Day. It, it's the, the most annoying guy you know. It's Pi Day today, bro. Gel. <laughs> Gel. Words you can add a Y to at the end. Spiky. Bumpy. Mm, day. Wittery pie, daddy, mui, servi, smash. Tennis, tennis terms. Set, serve, smash, spike. Spike is not a tennis term, now that I think about it. Uh, actually, volleyball terms. Bump, spike, set, and smash.
bumps bump sets okay <laughs> you're telling me smash isn't a isn't a volleyball term Jackie Jackie Onassi daddy leather daddy <laughs> we've been through this before smash pie pie gel moo moo daddy Row, row, excel, keywords, row, new, pi, day, accomplishment, sounds animals make, Jackie, pi, things with a crust, things with a filling, Things that you can add an S to the front and the end. Shits, spies, swinners, and smooths. You can add a T to the end. Moot, newt. <laughs> you can add SE to the end. Moose. Pisces, I, with God as my witness, I have no idea. So we're going to go via, via vibes, okay? Pi and day will not go together. That's our red herring. Moose, <laughs> Jello, Daddy Yo, Day Yo, Winner O, ja Jackie O, oh, Jackie Onassis, okay. <sighs> New, Moo, Rue, Winner, A Hit. A success, a smash, and a winner. What are synonyms for a successful song or a box office victory? New, moo, row, pie. I have no idea what that is. Homophones of Greek letters. Holy. They are trying to give me mental illness. <laughs> They're getting... New York Times has taken the connection slander personally, bro. They said, oh, it's too hard for you? Double it and give it to the next guy. Holy cow, it's a zooted crossword today. Flexible gymnastics move. Split. Innocently clueless. Naive. Keeping it to zero is a Sisyphusian task. Inbox. Terracotta is a pottery material. Looks fabulous in slang. Slays. Now we're talking. That is what we're talking about. Explain the inbox for me. People are always talking about inbox zero. Keeping it to zero is a Sisyphusian task. United Sugar's extra fine granulated sugar, 25 pounds. Relevant to you if you are running a, a bakery. 25 pounds of sugar. Sugar is insanely cheap. I bet this is like $11.99. Okay. Go ahead and say it. Go say it. I can't wait to see Dune 2 so I finally understand what this Luzon Al Gabe stuff means. Did you see Tim Sweeney emailed Gaben and called him a, a freaking crook or something like that? And Gabe Newell emailed back and said, You mad, bro? <clears throat> it was the COO, but it's still hilarious. I don't know what a COO is. They do all the stuff that the CEO doesn't want to do. Chief Operations Officer. The hell does that mean? Isn't everything an operation, bro? COO actually runs the company while the CEO golfs? While the CEO runs their campaign to convince the shareholders that they deserve $107 million in compensation this year? Am I everything that's wrong with corporate governance? I don't actually vote whenever I get the email that's like, um, please vote for Apple Board of Governors. 
If I did, 100%, I'm voting Al Gore. You know why? Only name on the list I recognize. Plus, he deserves like a, a little glazing, bro. He got screwed in 2000. Am I crazy to think that this shit is like Western Sahara? It seems like it's in the same region. Not even close to the same region, actually. This is Saudi Arabia. I am cracked, bro. This, you're right, this is my Michael Jordan flu game. Even on Michael Jordan's flu game, he didn't have a free throw percentage of uh, 100%, bro. Also, why do they call them free throws? Can we dispose of these ridiculous airs? Because they're free? Oh, I mean field goals. I'm not talking about free throws. That's my mistake. I mean field goals. What the hell is a field goal percentage in basketball? I ain't seen anyone ever split the uprights. It's because they used to throw them underhanded. Man, James Naismith could never. James Naismith going Peaky Blinders mode when he sees Vince Carter do a 360-degree one-handed dunk over Bryant Big Country Reeves. Ah! Stop messaging me on Gchat. I can't close the window because I have the deliverables window for the Final Fantasy stream open. I need you to stop messaging me. It's a problem. All my friends who are at work are now in the Eastern time zone. So, well, they shouldn't even be done work. I guess if they were done work, they'd be too busy to shitpost. Mute the tab? Nah. Nah, it's not that kind of day. Pitiful. A adjective meaning full hmm. of pity. Compassionate. Powder. A verb meaning to sprinkle or... Easy mode. Studied. A adjective mean... Use a noun meaning the female of the sheep, especially when mature. You. Also you is a noun that means the female of the sheep. In franchise. A verb meaning to set... Okay, next. Stop. <laughs> Technician. A noun meaning a specialist... In Casserole. Oh. A noun meaning a... I don't think I've ever had one of these. Denizen. A noun meaning... Oh, I typoed! I typed Dennis Nuh! Mordant. An adjective meaning biting and caustic in... Oh, no, I'm cooked, guys. Sentries. A noun meaning guard. <laughs> Mordant. Moppet. A noun meaning baby, darling. Mop... <laughs> Isn't this what, like, a British person calls you when they're more mad than they've ever been in their entire life? Rugos. A adjective meaning full of wrinkles. Rugosus comes from Latin. Rugos. Stop. Oh my god. Immoderate. A adjective meaning exceeding just you. It's cr what could they be yapping about? We sometimes we go like 10 months without a message in the chat, man. Dispensation. A noun meaning a coracle. A noun meaning a small boat used in Britain from ancient time. Oh, uh, you, you know what? You, I'm muting the tab, man. I'm muting the tab. You did this to me. Let me see what's so important that they're talking about. Did you test drive the Ionic? I'm showing out on politics, politics. Put it in one message, bro. It's getting crazy. I'm closing the tab. I closed the tab. There you go. I closed the tab. See results. Coracle. It's with an A. Mordant. Denizna. That We should have had 13 today, but it happens. It happens. Are you wearing a candy corn shirt? I think I have a fever, so I'm... I have a blanket. I'm cozied up with a blanket. I'm comfy maxing. We should probably slash marker and get ready for the, the stream, right, Kate? I like how you picked the, the cute blanket. I thought about like taking the, the blanket that was actually thick, but even in my adult state, I'm still content maxing. I said I could take the blanket that actually has some insulation, but it's just kind of plain, or I could take the blanket that has pusheen on it and is literally like two micrometers thick and probably will provide no heat to me whatsoever, and I said, send it. I'd be careful touching stuff on my desk right now. I'm just looking out for you. Look at that. How's that for a, a sponsor? Well, that's, too? that's for your Twitch. Yeah, yeah, I've got it there. What, what did you use? You don't need to use it. It just shows up. It's, it, the, the email I got said, make sure you use it. So I'm using okay. it. Okay. 
Do you want to play or do you want to commentate? I can do whatever. You should play because okay. I think you're a better gamer and I will commentate. Okay. But let's start with the with a slash marker here, How okay? Is the controller though? It's I cleaned it with a, a oh, antiseptic wipe okay. last night. And it should be charged. I guess can you unplug it? I'm yeah. not familiar with this this technology. There you go. Okay. Slash marker. Final Fantasy. I can't type. Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. We have a one-of-a-kind sponsorship today. Thank you to Square Enix for the sponsorship. They said, hey, do you want to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth available exclusively on the PlayStation 5? I said, absolutely. They said, we got a great idea for you. We're looking for Final Fantasy creators who have chemistry and a bond together to mirror the system in the game that gives you synergies when you have two specific party members. They get bonus attacks and effects. I said, I know just the person. My wife has played... Why don't, why don't you eyeball... Your Final Fantasy 14, or your Final Fantasy history in general. My Final Fantasy history is not that great, though. Really? No. 14. Yeah. 10. 10. 10-2. 10 16. 16. Currently playing. That's about it, honestly. Okay. Well, it's an interesting one because I'm actually the nerd on this one. I played Final Fantasy 7... Uh, I have to be like so close to you, but I don't want to be that close to you. Yeah, I understand. You can just be in the center. I can't move over anymore because your okay. chair's all tilted. Okay, there you go. I am comfy maxing. We're, we, why don't we get it started here? This will probably make your stream look a lot better. Again, thank you to Square Enix for the sponsorship. Exclamation point FF7R. You can get a link to check it out for yourself. Please do. Uh, the game speaks for itself as well. I think you probably are uh, aware of it and also the incredible critical response that it got when it came out earlier this year. Why don't you get us started and I will explain to you the story of Final Fantasy VII <laughs> as I know it, okay? Long ago... <laughs> but I don't get to hear the game sound. That's true, you do not get to hear the game sound. The music the, is divine, you have to, by the you way. Have to... <laughs> So Cloud Strife is a, uh, a soldier of fortune with a fuzzy memory who has, he used to work for Shinra, a mega corporation located in the city of Midgar. There are many characters on the journey of Cloud Strife and his friends. Barrett is the leader of the Avalanche group seeking to take the Shinra corporation down a peg. You will recognize him easily because attached to his hand is a gun. Tifa is also one of the members of Avalanche who owns the bar Seventh Heaven in the underbelly of Shinra. Eris is a flower girl with healing powers. So would you freak out if I change it to Japanese? I think it would be better if you kept it on English for me. with Japanese subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> do you want the story so far or do you want... Is it, you know what? Why not give us the story so far? What if it takes an hour? There is so much to tell. Man, the voice work <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wish is I could immaculate. Hear it. There are also special features of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that avail themselves when you're using the Sony DualSense controller on oh, the PlayStation you know what? 5. I can bring the splitter. What's what splitter? Oh, the headphone splitter? Yeah. But no, I, no, you can't. Why not? Because I don't have my audio hooked up like that. Yes, it is. No, I'm, I'm not unplugging my cords in the middle of the stream. It's just not gonna happen. Sure. You don't understand what I, what I go through trying to make this work, okay? I can raise the volume. It's it for industry. <laughs> I cannot it's hear Marco. it. Dying. It's okay, you and can so read. You could hear her cries for oh mercy. my gosh, you're married to me. Don't you know I hate reading? <laughs> you know, honestly, why don't you, why don't you take the headphones out? It's okay. Yeah, see. He thinks the lady doth protest too much. Defense. This is Cloud Strife. I know that. He's rising up to protect the world of Mako. That was, uh, I, I think that was uh, Jesse. That's Barrett. He has the gun for a hand. Cloud Strife, an ex-soldier, hired by the Resistance 
to destroy Reactor 1. This is a boss you fight in the first mission. Sector 8. It's also very important. Shinra is a... Uh, Midgar is a city where the rich people live on a disc above the pollution, and then the less fortunate live under the disc in the, in the literal underbelly. Reunion. How would you judge and her? thus was destiny set in motion. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> With Reactor 1 gone, Avalanche set their sights on Mako Reactor 5. Unfortunately, they were playing that was, uh, by the that was the big thing, hands. remember? Because in the, the company was able to draw the wool are, over the people's eyes. Like pyramid. <laughs> and you're thinking of Tomb Raider. This is a different yeah. situation here. Seven, <laughs> killing the thousands. On the other side of fate, Sephiroth waited. The whispers undulating within him. Cloud okay brought his Sephiroth? blade down upon his rival. Sundering destiny. <laughs> we're not gonna invite you to anything like, ever again. Uh, we're like <laughs> less than ten minutes in, and you're like, you're in such a huge brand risk. Like, why are you, why are you torpedoing me? You're taking me down with you. It was there, beyond where fate could follow, that a new journey began. Okay, okay, okay. I have a good question. Which one is your favorite girl? I said it early today. Um, I've always been, uh, you know, Tifa versus Eris. I've always been on the side of uh, Tifa, because I've always been more compelled by by bossy girls than passive girls. Tifa. Yeah, Tifa. Mm -hmm. Shira Corporation. Mm -hmm. Home of the infamous Doctor Hojo, nefarious laboratory. Administrator, home of the Turks, Reno and Rude. He knows. I know a lot. I'm trying not to spoil, honestly, because I I know so much about the game. I don't want to let something slip. I don't want to be like, tell me everything you know about Lucretia. Ooh. <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say that? Oh man. Oh, the new heads don't know about Lucretia, huh? If you have to pick one, would you pick Zack or Cloud? You pick uh, Cloud. Zack is, uh, he's a non-playable character. No! Like a character, like a buddy. A buddy? Um, probably Zack. Cloud is kind of a little needy. He's, he's got a compromised immune system, much like myself, as a result of the Mako poisonings. Look at me. I got the sword. Oh, chuck, oh, chuck, oh, she's doing chuck. it. She's doing it. I advise you to go over the staircase. Whoa! Oh, easy there, badass. <laughs> Holy! Whoa! 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 So I don't know what this is like. I mean, it's not my domain. How much work would it take to keep your hair looking like that on a daily basis? It's got to be like ninety minutes plus, right? That's that's nobody's domain. Unless you're a fictional character. I saw a guy looking like that at the airport when we were there at like 11 p.m. And I was like, he just wants it more than, than anybody else, honestly. So it's important to note, Aerith is an agent of the Setna, the uh, ancient priesthood tasked with maintaining stewardship of the planet Mako, the planet that this game takes place on. You didn't say the oh, important part. <laughs> she uh, can grow flowers with her magical powers. <laughs> That's it? That's all I'm saying. No, she's dead! No, no, she's dead. Don't even worry about that. That's holy. It's one of the most powerful materia in the game. Wait, for real? Yeah, bro, it's holy. That's what I want to be like right now. Would you hold me while I, while I slept like that? That's how I feel. <laughs> what would I do? What else I would know. I do? You could use your phone with the other hand. <laughs> you cloud of the wake. 
Well, there's two separate timelines, I'm being told, that take place in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I couldn't believe my So this is past? Or is it future? Mm. Or is it is it parallel? <laughs> or is it Hemomancer? Really yeah. Hemomancer. Hmm. Hmm. An avalanche Fixie. soldier. Hmm. Genova. Hmm. A golden chocobo. Sure. Hmm. <laughs> Wish I could help, but never been motion sick. Sorry, man. That's basically you whenever I'm motion sick. Wish I could help, but skill difference. Yeah. I got an inner ear that actually works. <laughs> you should really put a seatbelt on. I mean, are you seeing this? He's going Saitama mode. <laughs> hey. Why is it working out, man? Mm. So that's Sephiroth. Sephiroth is the platoon leader for this uh, Shinra soldier group. How does he know? People think I don't know about Final Fantasy VII. Think I wasn't pouring over the logs in 1997-1998? Do you ever wonder, does he really have to have a naked chest? I mean, straight up, if I'm like a high-ranking military officer, it's t-shirt and shorts from that point on. <laughs> Job. This just seems like too much. <laughs> how about how about twelve belts? <laughs> well, there's been times when it would help, but <laughs> doesn't that look like angry Tomo? I could see that. Where is the way food? Tomo, when I try to pet him after he meows, so I pet him. I haven't pulled for a week. <laughs> oh! So dead. This Gorgon is going Pierce. down, man. She knows. I'm just piercing you. Ah! Like, that's one thing about Sephiroth. He is, like, quite dramatic. He probably <laughs> didn't need to do all that. <laughs> but we love him for it, don't we, folks? We love him for it. If you can be, would you rather be a Cloud or Zack or Sephiroth? I think I would rather be uh, Zack. Sephiroth is just doing too much. Wait, wait till you get a little deeper in the game and he starts... It's like he's carrying around some, some heavy equipment for a long, long time. And it's not like a briefcase. Like, it's unwieldy. It all started in the fall. He's going to the ends of the earth. He's, he's living in caves made of ice and stuff like that. It's not just me. I was just making sure that my wife is behaving. What are you talking about? <laughs> In, inside of this town is a, as you can see right there, there is like a, a castle. I guess it's a refinery. As a child, I always thought it was a castle. Like a mansion. And in the basement? Oh, what horrors await in the basement. <laughs> or what pleasures. Tell me, hmm. how does it feel? I have no home, so I wouldn't know. Still got right? He's so extra, right? A mother, <laughs> I'm not reading. <laughs> she died shortly after I was born. Yeah, girl doesn't My read father. in video games. Oh, there. Genova? Like from the Shinra building? It's true. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm getting you back. Basically, his mom is uh, an alien, <laughs> is what he's getting at. <laughs> Which explains maybe why he's a little quirked up. Let's go. He has a mommy issue. Mm -hmm. Hope I didn't keep you waiting. I'm Xander, the mayor here. I, I like the star. It's very, <laughs> Welcome you very to shiny. Town. Please, if you'll follow me. He looks like half the people on the Disney cruise. <laughs> I was about to say, Consider he looks like your like D and D character. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Meow. Dude, it's Ragdoll! You see? It's like Ruka. It is! Per ugly. What's the significance of the cats? Mm, I think they're cute. No, in this game. I think that's the significance. Regular cats? I don't know. Cat Sith? 
There's a lot. He's, he might be the only person in the game more quirked up than Sephiroth, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'll have cats that sit. Really? Yeah. He's a full sized Moogle. He's not a Moogle. Mm -hmm. Isn't he? He's a cat? He's a Moogle. My dad died when I was a kid. How is he a Moogle? In 1997, he was a Moogle. She was on her own. Oh, he rides a Moogle. Whatever. He's a cat. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Moogle Sith. I'll be right there. Wow. Mother. Is that you? The mom looks too hot. Welcome home. I'm not touching that. <laughs> You. <laughs> my my! So that's what they've got you wearing, huh? You soldiers sure do clean up nice. I've never been so proud. Buddy, come on. <laughs> Women must be hounding you day and night. Mom. You know, there's all kinds of temptations in the big city. Me, after I come home from. Uh, winter break, 20 pounds heavier than I left in my first year of university. But the girls must be all over you. Not really, Mom. <laughs> Playing a lot of Super Smash Brothers 64 with the lads, though. I can tell you when you're being a silly goose. That's the perfect type for you, I'd say. He is going EP mode. They are feeding you properly, aren't they? Oh, Cloud. But you know Eyes up here. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes up here, Cloud. Eyes up here. You're my son. Of course, I'll always be. Your controller is vibrating crazy. Yeah, that's a dual sense haptic feedback. <laughs> he can't go back into his house though, because they turned it into an Airbnb. <laughs> you moved out. They got two people from San Jose in there right now. The Nidhog Hotel. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? That looks like it could be a, a Sid. This looks like a Sid, bro. A soldier. And you are? Richard Zongan. Yeah, Wrong. I knew it. <laughs> Richard Zongan. <laughs> I don't believe that Richard Zongan is in the original game, or maybe I've I've erased him from my memory. <laughs> Do you not remember Sid? Sid's got the he's got an eye patch, man. What the hell? <laughs> well toned, but lacking mass. Bro, those are my obliques. <laughs> Who asked you? Oh, is this in the in the original game? Do you go to this guy's dojo and you have to beat his mini games in order to progress? Don't be shy. I have many pupils here. You go to his boxing gym or something. But nope, not at all. Okay, oh, never mind. And never mind. Yet. Would you like to have a have a cape like that? I think I would get it. Isn't that a too dirty. Hazard? Yeah, I don't like I don't like stuff around my neck. Real I think you're, you're gonna definitely go get choked. Yeah, I think I'll choke and die probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Got anything to say for yourself? I didn't know. We're not gonna fight here, right? He's, does he look like a final boss? He's chilling. Oh man, how how did you not make a comment about his pants? No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got some. He does need a diaper change, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> that's like a week old. <laughs> <laughs> we have a child. Huh? Eric went to my place. I figured you might be there. Wait a second. You two were neighbors? We were, but it's not like we hung out that much. We had our reasons. <laughs> Holy cow, what are they doing? You got a package of cocaine in there. Tifa, what's going on at your house? <laughs> what's she doing? What's she smoking? Oh, dog. Remember my cat? Cat food. Her name was Fluffy, I think. Yeah. She was always disappearing. Holy cow, the sausage. <laughs> Is that okay? 
I think as long as you eat them in like a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Chow down. <laughs> Hope they got their dehumidifier on. <laughs> The house is huge. If you're gonna live in a butcher shop, I'm gonna treat you like a piece of meat. Hello? What is this room? That's called a home telephone. I know it's a little bit after or before your time. That's how we used to have to order our pizzas. Yo, bottle of ether? Bottle of ether. That restores MP. You straight up yoinked her ether, bro. <laughs> you went into my room? Okay, hang on, hang on. Cloud, what are you doing here? My stuff? She's getting mad. Kate, she's getting mad. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see what size. Cloud. She's pretty upset. Asshole. Yeah. They're they're going off on him. But girls like bad boys, so like Oh, you know, maybe it's okay. You know what that is? It's a Moogle. You passed. <laughs> Just leave the open door wide. Steal open. the ether, leave the door wide. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> did I just murder I don't know what you did, but people are very upset. I think I might have murdered a child. Just <laughs> is it uh... Sephiroth, Sephiroth, save our village from the fiends? <laughs> Bro slept through his alarm. We leave once our guide arrives. Yes, sir. Holy! I must insist that I take you up the mountain. My daughter is Dad. Tifa. You can still Yo, have your cutie. She is, she is dripped so out, bro. Does she go uh, hey howdy hey? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the armor is for. You can't hear, but they added a little wrinkle when the cowgirl outfit came out. They added like a banjo into the into the theme. Tifa looks so tiny compared to Sephiroth. Sephiroth is like seven too. What's that? Hundred two hundred and. 75 centimeters no. tall. <laughs> Gotta be like 198 or something, right? Thanks. Say cheese. Sounds like you were having a good time. Does he really have to pose yeah. for a picture like that? <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> yeah, again. How does the multiplayer work? The better gamer takes the controller, and uh, the other person riffs over top. Punisher mode. Hey, BD Mata, thanks for the gifted subscription. Let's Thank you. Fire. fire. Mm. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we pick up the pace? Not unless we absolutely have to. <laughs> Little overkill, I like Take it. Take it, fire! <laughs> How about I go on ahead and clear the way for you guys? I'll be careful. <laughs> Yo! You better. He's cool. squat maxing. See at the reactor. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yo, it's the power stone. Yes, materia is very important. She said, don't worry about all that. Let me fight. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to slot it into the two slots on your buster sword? I thought my sword was already... Well, it has two materia in it, but you could take one of them out and give yourself access to a greater amount of active time battle effects and spells. But I'm locked. Well, you have uh, spots in your bracer where you could place... I'm, I'm locked, man. Oh, okay. Ne never mind. Never mind. Mm, Backseaters. Never mind. She doesn't know. Press the triangle button. I did press the triangle button. Oh. 
Oh. I mean, she's she's kind of insane. You're done. Well, that's that. Huge. Where'd they go? Friend? What the heck? They're out. Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Are they gonna come over? Or am I just gonna go by myself? When you invite the girl you've had a crush on for 10 years to come out with you and then your friend asks if he can come too and you're like sure no problem and then they have an immediate natural chemistry and you're like what the heck man what that's not how it's supposed to be is that the real life it's just you know it's one of those things that makes uh ah. makes life interesting I'm staggered as well by the adeptness of your combat. Piece of cake. Thank you. Um, my health is not doing so good. Really? Yeah. No, well, you're not. I mean, you have 1,300 health points. That doesn't seem too bad. There you go. Good thing you swiped that ether from her house. <laughs> I'm sure tonight she won't be like, "Don't worry, guys. I saved some ether to cook us dinner." Oh, what? <laughs> Gotta squeeze in. Mm, yeah, go second. What? <laughs> what do you make it sound like that? Just so you can go back out if it gets too, uh, if it gets too congested. Did it sound like that? You would not catch me doing that. What the heck is already he, here? He teleported. He he rode on Ultima weapon to get over the gap. She really comes in to the reactor with you, huh? Well, you know what? She can handle herself. Yeah, she kicked the monster. She kicked the monster. She's, she can do multiple combos. I wonder what could that be? Watch out for this guy. This is a, a classic hard boss. Is that a pun intended? It's a screamer. Oh, shit! Oh, did you see that, Ryan? <laughs> did you see that? Huge parry. Did you see that? She is going off. Oh my god. I'm doing that again. Staggered 160%. It's the perfect opportunity. Hit him with another one. How about a focus thrust? Oh, you're out you're out of AP. Thanks oh for my your god, help. I did it again, Ryan! I did it again! Did you now, see Perry? Listen, fighting the birds, it was very good by the I way. I did it again! <laughs> Fighting the birds is one thing, but Sephiroth is really just hanging back letting you tank this dude. This seems like bad standard operating procedure. That's that. Was that supposed to be hard? Mm -hmm. Oops. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. That is pretty bad. <laughs> How about Sephiroth not saying anything? His sword probably weighs like a hundred kilograms. Like, dude is he's sweating it right now. Oh. Your parents yeah, <laughs> I heard that too. What kind of commander just doesn't say anything and just go ye? He did say time to die. How about the two other troopers? Well, he's only got two arms, okay? Oh, well. Hey, oh, 
Uh-oh. Honestly, why does he just... He might be up? okay, yeah. All they gotta do is just stand up. Didn't seem like there was a cliff or anything like that it's coming up. It's just shallow water. <laughs> What happened to the other soldier? Oh, he's toast. No, the oh no, the other one's there. He's in fate's hands now. <laughs> Sephiroth, people died. Do you know the way? <laughs> yeah. Following the river should get us back to the village. We're not going to the village. Can you get us to the reactor? Sorry, I... I don't think I can. <laughs> I see. This is so scary. Well... Red three eyes. Yeah, uh, Sam Fisher... Well, Sam Fisher came with us. safer with us. Okay. I'll be joining you up front this time. What? For your performance review. Oh, Are you kidding Dude, me? the yellow paint. Good luck. Send it. I can tell you exactly where to go. Yes! She really said I ain't worried about all that. <laughs> Probably doesn't follow the yellow paint. Purple? Purpy? Purpy? It's, it's, it's too dark. It's non climbable. There's no paint. Oh, it's not this way. Medium rare? What is that? <laughs> How does a cat order his steak? Oh. <laughs> Wait, that's your original? Yep, I made it up. And by made it up, I mean I stole it from Chibli, who I think probably stole it from TikTok. A Mako Spring. It's beautiful. <sighs> yeah, but if we keep using Mako to power our homes, springs like this will disappear, right? What are you talking about? Yeah, but like not for a bit. Dead. And the mayor, if you must know. Except the planet's huge. Mako will never run out, right? Naturally formed materia. And look at the size of it. Astounding. For the Mako energy to condense into something like this, it must have taken an eternity. I've always wondered, how does materia let you cast spells exactly? How did you ever get to be a soldier? What a simple question we all know the answer to. To put it simply, it's just, uh, the just knowledge do it of the ancients is sealed within each orb. That knowledge not only connects us to the planet, it allows us to tap into her power. That's how we can use magic. Or so they say. Really? Here's a video essay on magic it you can watch. Sure is weird. Man, this guy is so weird. Patronizing. He's definitely the... Hmm. Materia, you say. Hmm. Hojo, from Research and Development. His predecessor was a great man, but him... He is anything but... We should press on. I want to fight the tutorial boss. Hmm. I think after one more encounter, we should should call it. I'll send you on your way. Hey, now, in Lunchables, are you a cheese on top of the meat guy or a meat on top of the cheese guy? I'm a cheese on top of the meat guy. In in all possible uh, situations. Keep it up. Try R3. It's terrain action. Oh! It's circle, it's circle. Hmm, is it though? Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> so it is. He's dead. Holy. Boy, He's bouncing on it. Is there any skill that you want me to use? Honestly, you're doing a great job. Hell's maybe maybe Gate. Hell's Gate? 
on the twin brain. That seems pretty good. Oh, we're getting zapped! <laughs> This way. Bossy. You know who sang that song? Uh, Le Seraphim. No, it's JYP. JYP, okay. Ask me another one. Oh! Whoa! Scared me, man. Mm -hmm. I want to dash, I want to dash. I know that one, that's end mix. Yeah, oh! There's I, I just like to alert you to the fact that Cloud Strife is about to pass away. What do you mean? He's fine. He has no health? What do you mean? Oh, never mind, his limit break is far away from being charged. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> My mistake. I thought he was in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Holy backseating. <laughs> what is type A? Type A is chatters who only talk about game mechanics. Oh. And you thought that was me. Holy, look at the strength. You think you could do that? Oh! Holy! What the heck? There was a shortcut? Materia. Oh, look at this. Wow. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? It's where you fight Orphan of Kos. Not Leviathan? Oh, she knows. She knows. <laughs> what is it? They went with the swiftness. Uh oh, that's a boss arena. Zoo! It's a synergy skill, just like we have synergies in our banter. When guarding with R1, you can team up with allies to perform a variety of synergy skills, useful abilities that do not consume ATB. Press, you know the button, while guarding to view descriptions of these skills. You gotta try. You gotta try. There you go, you did it. Did I? With the dual blade dance. Come on. I thought it's a terrible blade. You know what? I bet this guy real weak against Yeah, yeah, so true. Staggered. You put them in a staggered state. Or pressured state. I'm in a lot of trouble now. Oh. Holy cow. You know, I have so many. You do have a lot of mega potions. I mean, it might be for the best for the world if Sephiroth perishes at the hands of the zoo. Just throwing that out there. Holy! Ah! ah! Don't worry. I did not die. So close. Enormous. Right. Well he's, he's so oh, toasted. Oh, oh, limit. Octo slash. Amazing job. I'm glad we got to show off a little bit of the synergy mechanics as we come to the end of the uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sponsored segment of the stream. Thank you for joining me, Kate. You're very welcome. Thank you to uh, Square Enix for the sponsorship, of course. Make sure to check out the game for yourself. Exclamation point FF7R in my chat. You'll get a link that can take you to the, uh, the relevant information. Check out, check out my link on my stream as well. 
and I will send them over to you. Here Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, now I'll go up. Okay, I will send them over right away. But thank you everyone for the support during the Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth segment. Thank you Square Enix for sponsoring the stream as well. Thank you, thank you. It was honestly a blast. Y'all, thank you very much. Thank you. That means a lot. Would love more co-op stream because I got into watching you guys post baby. I know, I know, I will, we will have to think about doing more co-op streams. Basically, Ryan doesn't want to play Persona and thirst over Mitsuru with you. He doesn't, he doesn't thirst over any characters, I think. That's, that's just me. I'm the only one thirst, thirst over characters. I don't think I've ever heard him going like, man, that character is hot. I think he once said, I don't understand how people can find anime character hot or cute or whatever because they're not human. It's just like 2D art. And I didn't know what to say. I said, um, I guess. <laughs> He's right, but he shouldn't say it. I think. I don't know. They are real to me. <laughs> I go, um, I think I said, well, some characters are really hot though. <laughs> but some characters are really hot. You can't ignore that. But at least he doesn't I don't know, even though he doesn't understand it, he just leaves it as, like, he doesn't understand it. Instead of, you know, judging it and and look down on it. Because then he would be like, why is your room like this? When we, um, I think I told a story before, but when we first moved to an apartment together, we, in the living room... Like, the living room was kind of roomy. So we put two desks side to side. And then, so one side, like, left side of left side of the living room was my side with my computer and the table and all that. And then right side was Ryan's side. And so left side of the living room was all anime posters. <laughs> and then... And then, like, the right side of the living room was completely empty. And then, um, one time, our internet broke. So, our internet guy had to come into our apartment. And then... <laughs> and then he saw the living room and he went, Um... I see. And I'm not... I wasn't... The thing is, I wasn't even embarrassed. And I should have been embarrassed, maybe. But I still wouldn't be embarrassed. But it wasn't just, like, normie anime posters. There were some, like, Nisa, like, Nippon Itch software video games with fully naked lady, but with only the... Only the important part, like, like, bleeped out. But it was part of the... Part of the pre-order, though. I didn't buy the poster, I pre-ordered the game, and then it came with that poster, and I thought, maybe I'll just put them up. I didn't really think much about it, so I just put them up, and then I realized, oh, well, like, the dude just saw a naked anime chick on my wall. But I wasn't, you know what, I wasn't ashamed. I wasn't ashamed, I said, please come in. But he definitely thought it was Ryan. So, like, he thought my side was Ryan's side, and then he thought Ryan's side was my side. So, it's like, oh, this girl doesn't have anything poster, but then look at this bald white dude 
with the freaking naked anime chick. Oh. Should have said, I think it's weird too to him. No, I would never. I would never sell him out like that. I did not frame him. That it was just a misunderstanding. And you know, even nowadays, whenever we go to the restaurant, Ryan always orders salads. He loves salads. I like salads, but you know what I like more? I like greasy burger and french fries. So I order greasy burger and french fries, and Ryan orders salad. And when the server brings the food, they go, oh, here's the food. You know, here's the salad and here's the burger. And they always put the salad in, for, in front of me and the burger in front of Ryan. And I was like, what the heck? Give me that burger, dude. That's my stuff. Pizza moment. Salad is tasty. It's just, it's just, it's not as good as burger and french fries. Or if Ryan also wants burger, then what he gets is he gets a burger and a side of salad. And I always get french fries or yam fries or onion ring. I never substitute my sides for salads. Cause I mean, come on, you gotta, you gotta get some, you gotta get some, you know, deep fried action. <laughs> so when I get, when we both get burger, and with the side of fries and side of salad, they always put salad in front of me. And I'm like, that's not me. But I don't, I don't say it. I just, we just wait for the, the server to go and then we just change our plate. So we don't make them all awkward. Why didn't the bro fill the apartment with the Canucks posters or hockey players? I guess, you know what? That's very Ryan. That would be very Ryan thing to do. But he would definitely not buy the posters though. <laughs> Tevara eats sushi. Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know, in my little room, in my little locked room. I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave, the one dimensional man. He's filed under cocksucker in my little black book, Sweetness Ken. Rot your teeth, bittersweet, cacophony, and you hold the key, you hold the, you think I don't know every word from Slackers? Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like, I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998, and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there? 